This video contains major spoilers for the Season 10 finale of Stargate SG-1 from this time index onward. Named in honour of the human colonel Jack O'Neill, whose actions have saved the Asgard race on several occasions, the O'Neill-class destroyer is the first Asgard vessel designed entirely for the purpose of warfare, more specifically, for combat against the invading replicators. Replacing the older Beliskner-class mothership as the primary Asgard combat vessel, the O'Neill is larger, faster, and far better armed than its predecessor. The ship is centuries in advance of any Tauri or Goa'uld vessel, and represents one of the few known craft capable of realistically challenging Ori motherships. 1,500 meters in length and 700 meters wide, the O'Neill's space frame is sleek with smooth curving lines, giving it a starkly different appearance to the blocky and angular Belisnir class. Like most Asgard ships, the O'Neill is powered by neutrino ion generators, providing 1 billion kilojoules of power to each of the ship's two sublight engines. The O'Neill normally carries a small crew, but can be operated entirely by remote if necessary, requiring no onboard personnel. In spite of its massive size, the O'Neill class is highly manoeuvrable, capable of making sharp turns at high speeds, and employing dogfight-style tactics. This agility allows the O'Neill to run circles around the few ships larger than itself, such as the Ori Mothership, engaging them from multiple vectors whilst evading return fire. At FTL speeds, the O'Neill makes use of a supremely advanced Asgard hyperdrive, allowing the vessel to reach speeds most races would consider wildly impossible. Able to complete a full intergalactic journey from Earth to the edge of the Pegasus Galaxy, a distance of 3 million light years in two short days. The shields installed on the O'Neill are similarly powerful, able to withstand multiple direct hits from the central beam weapon of an Ori mothership, as well as extensive concentrated fire from Ori pulse cannons, weapons more than capable of destroying a fully shielded Goa'uld Hatak-class attack vessel in a single hit. Asgard shields have even been known to survive hits from ancient Lantean drone weapons, and with a zero-point module installed, the shields have even withstood a close-range impact from a coronal mass ejection in the Lantean system. Beneath the O'Neill's shields lies the equally resilient armour plating, comprised of a Naquida carbon trinium composite that even the replicators have failed to acquire. The whole plating of the O'Neill is the strongest armour the Asgard have ever created and can resist almost any bombardment. The O'Neill is armed with four ion guns mounted on the ship's wings and bow, each capable of retracting into the ship's hull to shield them from harm. The ion bolts fired by the weapons are designed to penetrate the shields of Replicator and Goa'uld starships, capable of refracting to bypass the shield barrier and strike the target's hull. These weapons were the only known energy weapons in the galaxy, capable of completely vaporising the blocks that make up Replicator constructs, which were normally considered to be completely impervious to energy-based weaponry. The first vessel of the O'Neill class constructed never saw active duty, as it was sacrificed as part of an Asgard strategy to defeat a replicator invasion of Othala. The O'Neill was used to draw the approaching replicators away, as the Asgard and Tauri had correctly predicted that the replicators would pursue it, hoping to consume its advanced technologies. Once the replicator vessels had been drawn away, the O'Neill engaged its self-destruct mechanism, detonating its neutrino ion generators to pulverise both itself and the unshielded replicator ships as they pursued it through hyperspace. Despite the loss of the original prototype, the Asgard persevered and went on to build a sizeable fleet of O'Neill-class warships, which would see action across the Asgard Replicator War and during the years of the Great Enlightenment. Even after the mass suicide and extinction of the Asgard race, elements of the O'Neill-class design would live on in the technical data passed over to the Tauri, and be used to improve upon the impressive Daedalus-class battlecruiser, adding to the already extensive legacy of the Asgard people. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Please remember to like, subscribe and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. And if there's a particular spacecraft you'd like to see looked at, let me know in the comments below and I'll get right on it.